All right, welcome everyone and happy Sabbath to yours and only San Angelo Sabbath School panel. How are you doing, friends? Doing fantastic. Doing, doing well. Doing well. Great. I am very happy to see you, even though you look a lot smaller than in real life. <laughs> it's good to see you. We've been on the phone, but this is the first time that we're actually getting to interact for like two weeks already, right? A week and a right. half. Right. Week and a half. Yeah. Something like that. Half. Yeah. So, um, what we wanted to do today is simply to spend a little bit of time, about half an hour, which is less than what we usually have. And there's a lot to say here. So, you know, disclaimer this is going to feel like a frustrating experience already. Uh, but nonetheless, we'll try our best. And we will cover the Sabbath school for today. But before we move forward, Brian, can you pray for us? I'd be happy to right. you join me in prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, as your humble servant has come to you to uh, read your word this morning, study your word this morning, dear Heavenly Father, we ask that you just fill us with the Holy Spirit to lead and guide and direct us in it and all things in our lives, dear Heavenly Father. Be with our brothers and sisters out there that will be listening to this, dear Heavenly Father, that it may resonate in their hearts throughout the coming week, dear Heavenly Father. They may have a desire to have a more close and personal relationship with our Creator, Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, Amen. which is our prayer. Person. Amen. 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 All right. Okay. Well, let's get right into it. Have about, okay, a little more than half an hour. Okay, friends. So the Bible verse, the memory verse for today is one that is very much um, one of the most beautiful verses in the Bible, right? Which is Daniel 12, verse 3. Could someone read it for us? Those who, go ahead. Go ahead. Those who wise shall shine like the brightness of the firmament, and those who turn many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. Uh, a second. Daniel such a beautiful text or when you guys hear it what what do you think about think really about that really that we have a that Don't we have a work to no, do no, no worries <laughs> <laughs> okay. i'll raise my hand really go. that we have we have a work to do is really what it's saying okay. you know it and we're not earning that star but it's because it's in our hearts that we care for somebody else okay. Okay, so you are you're emphasizing the idea of, of turning many to righteousness, which is certainly right. um, a, a wonderful work, a beautiful, beautiful work. Yeah, Brian. Yeah, that was a uh, Mar Marianne finally kind of got it. You know, it's, it's like the evangelism aspect of it. You know, the only way we get them is to be out there and talking to them, at least so we have an opportunity to be in front of them at times and stuff. So it shows us that we need to be, as it says, we need to be those evangelists out there in the world today. And that's how we shine like the brightness of the firmament, those who are wise. It's kind of like the ten virgins, you know, and mm -hmm. stuff. Five were wise, five weren't wise. So the, the only way to have that, that brightness is to be like the five that were wise. So Beautiful. to carry that extra. Yeah. Yes. Friend, Mary Ellen. Well, I think about the fact that the wise that shine like the brightness of the firmament, that's the first part of getting close to Jesus because nobody's going to like to get close to Jesus if we're not. And if we're not showing how happy we are, and so if we're so full of the Holy Spirit and Jesus that it just automatically comes out, then it will bring others to Jesus. Mm -hmm. And it, it will be turning others to righteousness that way. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's kind of like a twofold thing. Yeah. First, our relationship with Christ, and then reaching out to others to bring them to Christ. Yeah. It, it's really cool, you know, as I'm listening to you guys, how much this verse connects through a lot of other verses that talk about our Christian experience, right? We talked about the 10 virgins. We can talk about Jesus calling us, you know, light of the world and he himself being the light of the world. And also, you know, so, so this is a very, a very englobing, a very comprehensive text. Now, a question that I have, right? So, so we, we mentioned a little bit, you know, this wisdom and this leading many to righteousness, but but so Brian, you, you tackled that a little bit. What do you what are you hearing when 
when Daniel says, those who are wise shall, lot, shall shine like the brightness of the firmament. What is this wisdom? Well, the wisdom is the knowledge of who God is and mm -hmm. who our Savior is. Have that knowledge, like Mary Ellen said a little bit there. If we don't have that knowledge to begin with, how can we share it with someone else? True. True, true. We're, we're, grounded, we're grounded in the faith of Jesus. I mean, he, we know there's nothing else in this world that's going to help us. Very true. Now, uh, based, based on, I think that, you know, if we're going to base on the Sabbath school and on the book of Daniel itself, what does, you know, because let's see, Mary, Mary Ellen, can you read Daniel 12, verse 1? Hang on just a second. I should have already been turned there, but... <laughs> <laughs> Caught me off guard there. <laughs> no All right, Daniel 12, 1. At that time, Michael shall stand up, the great prince who stands watch over the sons of your people. And there shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that time. And at that time, your people shall be delivered. Everyone who is found in the book, everyone who is found written in the book, yeah. And then, thank you. Thank you. So, so we're, we're still talking and I know we're kind of jumping a little bit into Sunday, but, but still with the Bible verse, the main, the main Bible verse for, to, for this week in mind. Um, what does this Michael standing up tell us about the God that we're trying to know? We're talking about wisdom, being the knowledge of God. What does this Michael standing up tell us about who God is? It's the, uh, Michael stand up who God is. It's the, that's a, that's a really good question because it's, it's Michael. We know is the archangel, which is a, a saying for him, but he's actually the son of God. He's mm -hmm. Jesus Christ himself mm -hmm. and stuff. So with him standing up, it kind of starts, it's kind of the start of the, of the pre-advent judgment in a sense. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it also gives you hope because we all need a leader and, human leaders are you know they're human yeah. but we know that christ is firm and we read it in his word and that gives yeah. us consolation and, and i think that you're you're tackling there uh into something that is very true to the experience of the author of this book right he he mingles with kings both in israel and then when he gets what well, judah but when he gets captive into babylon one king after another all of them trying to outdo each other in power and might and majesty and all of them dying or getting captured of, you know, all of them ultimately failing. Right. And, right. and Daniel, this is kind of a, a bit of a sweet reminder that Daniel, uh, he dies in exile, right? All his longing to go back home never gets fulfilled. But however, and all this mingling with Kings and all this, this frustration of never going back to the motherland, He's able to see, as you were saying, this leader standing up, right? And, and the Sabbath school makes that point of showing us, right? You have one king in one chapter and another king in another chapter, right? And kings after kings battling each other. And then Michael stands up. Which, as Brian was pointing out, Michael, Michael is this, this, this um, side illustration, I guess, of Jesus, right? Another way of presenting us Jesus as this commander of the armies. So... So what do you think that tells us? And I think that Marianne, you were tackling into that a little bit more, but what does that tell us about God as we navigate not only COVID-19, but, but the, the prophetic moments of history, past, present, and future? What does that, what does that help us as, as human beings today to know that ultimately Jesus is the one standing up and making it happen? Brian called it the pre-admin judgment. They're ultimately the making it happen, the, the finishing the story well. What does that tell you in your experience? Well, yeah, you know, that really, go ahead, Mary Ann. Uh, it points out that God has left his word. Okay. And he's left us the information that we need to know about the past and the future. Yeah. That we don't need to lose hope. We have, we're, it's like Israel going to the promised land. Mm -hmm. They had to depend on God and he would take them there. And we are grumbling and complaining, but we know that God is faithful and he, we see his, we don't see his footprints in the sand. We see him yes. carrying us through. 
Yes, that's true. I, and I like that because ultimately that points out. So I was listening. I just have a little one there that's a bit of a pain. Um, I, 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 I like what you <laughs> Yeah, I like what you're saying because it points out to the fact that as, as Michael stands up, we should stand up with him, which is ultimately a call to confidence, right? A call to, to us not being passive as Jesus ministers through history for us. And, and, and as Jesus takes the initiative and in ultimately bringing this world's history into fruition and to a happy ending, but that we're part of that happy ending. We're part of that work that needs to be done of leading people into righteousness. And, and as we're mentioning, what, it, what does it mean to lead people into righteousness? It's the good news. Okay. What can we say? It's the good news. Okay. Mary Ellen, what do you think? Well, to lead people to righteousness, you need an example to follow. Okay. And our example is Jesus. So yeah. if we follow Jesus, then others will see us, what we're doing, and we're an example to them to point them to Jesus. And then they see Jesus, and then they begin following him. Okay. Uh, to lead people to righteousness is it's about showing love and compassion and explaining how much God loves us. Okay. I mean, I'm not sure if I'm explaining, I'm not sure if I'm putting my words exactly yes. like I'm wanting them to. But. Yes, yes. And I, and I think that, that ultimately, you know, righteousness, you know, especially we're going to connect this to the Beatitudes in the New Testament, right? There's being hungry and thirsty for righteousness, which is righteousness, to make it in, in plain English, is right living or godly living, right? Yes. Which ultimately leads yes. to, yes. to the first half of the verse, which is wise living, right? You're wise because you know God, right? Brian said wisdom, of, wisdom is knowing God, but it's, it's living in that knowledge, right? So we are, I think that, that this, this goes back to the work, right? That all of this, all of this beautiful conclusion, this, this end of times work is about embodying a life of knowledge of a good father and and sharing that with others and 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 spreading that light so that they can continue doing so which which i think is beautiful now it points us to something and i want to ask you a question and this is kind of a rhetorical question right but do you find in this verse and, and really in the sabbath school anything telling us that we should be obsessed about fitting the way we think, think uh, you know, fitting times and events in the right place always? Is that our main job? No. 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 But it shows us how accurate God is in his, his prophecies and stuff. Because when it, cause it even gets to the point to where he tells Daniel that there's going to be three kings in even the Persian aspect of it. And we see those three kings arise and fight each other and everything else. Mm -hmm. It's interesting even see the, the three kings that come from there. Then we see the four kings that come out of Alexander the Great, you know, and how they're, how they're separated and stuff. Of course, that's a little further in the lesson. I think it's in last week's lesson, actually. Yes. And stuff. Week, yeah. and we see that. We see that he is not only correcting what he's telling us and showing us through history, he's predicting it way ahead of time. It's like, how do you tell someone is a prophet, you know, kind of aspect, you know, sure. if they, if they prophesize about something and pass and it's exactly as they prophesize it, then we can trust it. Yes. Yeah. I like that. But, but I like how you mentioned, right. That that is, that is a way in which we are reminded that God is in control, that God is true, that the word that he gives to his prophets is true, but it, it's kind of almost a, uh, it's, it's almost as if it is a means to an end, right? That, that in and of itself, a prophetic unraveling is not what should occupy most of our brain, right? But, but prophetic unraveling and seeing God's word coming true is simply leading us into an increased confidence and trust in him. And I think that that's... Amen. That, yeah. That's something we need to remember, right? Okay. All right, let's move yeah, to right. Monday. Um, trying to go here a little bit everywhere, but, but, but let's move on Monday. Um, 
And so in Monday, it talks about being written in the book. Now, what book is it talking about? The, the book of life. Bible. The book of life. There oh. You go. There you go. And what is registered in this yes. book of life? It's my understanding that it's those who are saved by the grace of God, those who have accepted Christ and are living for him and go. have accepted his righteousness as theirs. Amen. Amen. Very nice. And, and, and so I think that's a beautiful reminder, right? That we, that, that, that what, what writes our names in these books is not our righteousness, but right. no. the receiving of Jesus' righteousness, right? So Jesus' right. righteousness and our acceptance of it gets us in the book, right? Yeah, we're in the yeah. other book until we accept Jesus' righteousness. Amen. And then all those things we did are in our name in the book of life is just our name and the life of Jesus behind it. Yeah, that's how God sees us. That's how our, our, our Father in heaven sees us then. He sees us as his son, as one of his daughters, as one of his sons, as one of his children. And what a blessing that is. Because if he saw everything we did on our behalf, then as it says, it's like filthy rags to him. You know, there's nothing we can do to gain that that uh, life in Christ, the mm -hmm. nothing we can do to gain that, gain heaven by what we do here on earth. Absolutely. Mary Ellen, you look like you wanted to say something as well. Yeah. I, sorry. I was just going to say, if we were depending on our righteousness, I don't think there's a single person on this earth that would be saved. Our righteousness can't, we're not capable Mm -hmm. on our own we have to accept christ's righteousness and him into our heart otherwise there's no hope anyway yeah yeah because yeah, he's the price i mean if there was somebody here that could do it, it you know why would jesus have to come here he could just wait it, for exactly yeah and i think that you guys are spot on and i love how i love how brian said it as well right this is this is our life but jesus life behind it our name but jesus name behind it right i think it's i think it's beautiful to think of it that way now i do want to talk as well about a little bit about and this is something where we could debate and there's often i believe confusion you know a lot of times for example now you know i remember when we had hurricane katrina whatever it was and now with COVID 19 where some people will take these these times of trouble you know in daniel 12 verse 1 talks about times of trouble as never have there been before. And I don't necessarily want to ask you if, you know, is this the time of trouble or not? But what does, what I do find maybe troubling, pun intended, is to see how quick some of us are to, to label these, these, these stressful times and these painful times for some people that do die and do suffer as punishments from god right i remember that when hurricane katrina came and we said oh you know maybe those people did something to deserve it right new york getting particularly beat up with COVID 19 oh well you know new york is new york and they probably deserve it now i want to read and then i want to ask for your reactions i want to read a quote from ellen white in in the lesson of monday this is the following satan will then plunge the inhabitants of the earth into one great final trouble as the angels of God cease to hold and check the fierce winds of human passion, all the elements of strife will be let loose. The whole world will be involved in ruin more terrible than that which came upon Jerusalem of old. Now, what does that tell you about, about the authorship and the reason why we have times of trouble? Not just that big one, but also all the little ones that we're having now. Well, that really shows us that that uh, Satan's the one who's doing this. It's not God because, you know, God mm -hmm. doesn't hang upon us. That, that's, uh, he, he, he said, I came and I came to fulfill life more joyfully, more abundantly to you, mm -hmm. not to destroy you. You know, and I think that's interesting. So many people want to tie this into that end time theory of, you know, they, it says it's never been before. Remember, there was a, a flu outbreak of years ago, you know, centuries ago, and stuff that killed thousands of people too, more than what's, what has happened today so far so as we wait for that end time thing we, we we have no inkling of what will actually happen at that time and how the destruction will be on a worldwide basis and it, i don't think it's going to take time it'll it'll be pretty quickly you know as far as that goes when it happens and we've also had in the past the pestilences i mean it's not just like now it was in the past too 
And uh, I know in, in Jesus' time, I think he was asked about a man that who sinned or a blind man. Something, a blind man, yeah. yeah. Something fell down and killed a bunch of people. Did they sin? Is that why it fell? And he said, no. I mean, things just happen. Yeah. Yeah. Regarding the story. Sometimes that, God allows things to help. Yeah. Okay. Sometimes God allows things to happen in order to prepare us or something in our lives. Sometimes he allows things to happen for other things, but it's not God causing things to happen that are bad. But God can take the things that are bad that are happening mm -hmm. and help something good to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Just like this COVID-19. God didn't get, it cause this COVID-19. Mm -hmm. Satan caused it. Mm -hmm. And God is allowing this to happen, true enough. But he, if, we, if we focus on him, he will show us things that we can learn from this. I mean, I don't know about y'all, but I've learned a lot of things. And it, it's, it, as far as saying it's end of time, we're told that as it end of time comes nearer, that more and more of this is going to happen. I mean, there was an earthquake in El Paso yesterday, a five point something earthquake. Mm -hmm. And yeah. it, there's a COVID-19 and there's all these things happening. And it's just going to continue getting worse and worse and worse. We don't know when the end of time is. So to say this is one of the signs of the end of time, well, we don't know that. Because yeah. Jesus said it's not for us to know when he's going to come back. It's not up to us to know that. We're supposed to live in the moment. Although, yeah, I, and I agree with you. Although I would say, you know, to be fair, prophetically speaking, a lot of times, look, a lot of times we think about the end of times as a, uh, you know, Friday, Friday is the end of the week, right? And obviously, we don't know that. We don't know if, you know, 2000, you know, 2020 is the Friday of the world's history. We don't know, right? That's fair. But prophetically speaking, looking at Bible prophecy and the rhythms and movements of prophecy, after the cross, we are living in the end of times. Yes. yes. That yes. There's no more... I mean, there's very little more to be done. Does that make sense? As far as yeah. as far as the work that 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 God is doing on our behalf, and so I think that's important to remember, right? As we as we talk about the end of times, to be able to difference between, you know, the actual last years, the last days of history, versus the 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 unraveling of prophetic work uh, that Jesus is doing yeah. for our sake. Um, but I agree. And, and I think that the one thing that I wanted to, to mention really fast, uh, just um, before we move forward, um, a, a teacher explained this great tribulation to me one day in the classroom in the following way that, that you know, throughout history, you, humanity, keeps, humanity keeps begging God to go away, right? We don't need you. We can do this by ourselves. And so that this great time of trouble is God giving a little bit of a taste to humanity what it would look like if he actually went away you know and and i think that that oh that yeah. kind of triggers our imagination as to uh, the what can you say that again brian and the french rep kind of gave an example yeah stuff. so you know when they took the pope captive and you see what happened in there then they realized that, what were they doing at the very end they were wanting they want. They knew they had to have something else. They knew they had to have Christ in their life to survive at that. So it's kind of like Job a little bit, you know, because we'd look at the book of Job and say the book of Job a little bit, you know, he didn't do anything, but yet these things happened to him because God said, Hey, what about my friend Job on the earth? You know, and Satan said, well, if you do this to him, you know, he'll curse you. If you do this, you know, then it was, and he took everything from me. He said, well, if you hurt him fleshly to his body and, and God said, okay, you yeah. kill him. You Army, but but you can't kill. Him. Yeah, he still did. Christ, you know. Hello. <laughs> no. Hi. Hi. No. Hi. Hi. Miss you. Miss you too. Sophie's watching cartoon. All right, all right. All right. She she was just delivering some food. Um. For what you get? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's for students in town, yeah. 
Um, interesting. Interesting. Yeah. Um, one thing, you know, we're kind of, we're in the last 10 minutes here of our time. But one thing that is interesting also on Wednesday is this idea of the book being sealed, right? And let's, let's um, well, just kind of for the sake, let's read from verse 2 to verse 4 to kind of have a big picture. You know, we already read verse 1. Um, oh, and I, I was keeping this as well. Before we move into the book being sealed, let's read verse 2, and I'll read this one, okay? This one is, is, is beautiful. It says, and many of those who sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, some to shame, and everlasting contempt. Right? The Sabbath school, and, and you know, we can get doctrinal here. The Sabbath school says this is one of the earliest um, doctrinal proofs in the Old Testament of, of, our, of, of, of a biblical understanding of the resurrection. Um, yeah. But more than that, what, what does it tell us? What does it tell us about, can you imagine that? How, how, how does that make you feel, right? But those of us, most of us have lost loved ones already, right? Um, what does it tell us? What, what is the feeling that the people of God will have when he comes back? Oh, joy. Cool. Joy, right? Yeah, yeah. Joy beyond imagination. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Relief. Relief. Well, it's, it's just like when you when you have a war and the the champion comes in and wins, you know, everybody's rejoicing. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Now, there'll be those ones who are trying to hide from the glory of his coming and stuff like that, the brightness of his coming. That's you true. Know, That's true. so to speak. You know, the, but the ones who are saved and they know that they're they and they feel that they're written in the book of life. And they, you know, they're, they're trying to follow Jesus as close as they can. Like I've told y'all at church at times, I want to actually be in a graveyard when Jesus comes back because I want to. I want to see my brothers and sisters coming up and receiving because you know they get that six foot head start on us because they're the first to meet him in the air, and then us who are alive will meet him. At, will meet them in the air with him. You know? so, like I tell people, you know, if I'm dead at that point in time when he comes back, you know, I got a six foot head start on you guys who are alive. So. <laughs> yeah. it, it's such a you know i think that i think that a lot of times when we talk about the end of times we have such a culturally speaking we have a such such a, a cold understanding of all of this but i think that all of you guys have tapped into it right but that the second coming of christ for those who loved god for those who who lived wisely and sought righteousness is going to feel like the best hug in history, you know. Amen. This, this Amen. reunion with those we love, this 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 warmth and love and tears of joy. That's what that's what the end of times is. It's not the end of the world. It's not that we're all going to turn into little angels playing the harp and forget about all our loved ones. And it, it we really don't know what it is. And I think that that we will do ourselves a favor in getting rid of cultural fears and misunderstandings of what the second coming of Christ means. And, and, but, but, you know, when the Bible talks in the book of Revelation about tears being wiped away and, and everything being made, being made new, we need to remember that we cry because we lose loved ones. We cry because we get sick. We cry because the love that God gives us for one another is, 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 is interrupted by death. And so Jesus comes to get rid of that interruption right and have and and give us the ability to love each other again the way we were created to love each other again and um and that's, yeah go that's ahead that's one thing he never he never intended for for death exactly exactly now just to conclude because uh zoom is telling us we have six minutes left the sealed book and this gets very much into the heart of adventist history right what what do you get from the sealed book on, on Wednesday, what got your attention from this? Well, the time it was filled up to, you know, it begins to get, we see the prophecy, the, the, the 2300 day prophecy being fulfilled through this, you know, mm -hmm. as we understand in 1798, you know, the book is open in a sense. That's when, that's when Michael stands up and the, and the, and the judgment starts, you know, at that point and stuff. And that's the interesting part to me is as I see it as, as a, an evangelist, 
you know, I love that aspect of knowing that that's when he truly stood up and he went from the holy to the most holy and stuff. And he started working on each, when our name comes up, we're either written, still written in the book of life or we're not written in the book of life at that point. But you know, the beautiful of that thing is to me was, is knowing that that time frame, you know, it's, it's, it's always, you know, we see people setting time always in the world today. Jesus is going to come back in. Jesus is going to come back on this day. And we know that's not right because if we study the time, take the time to study God's word, we know that no man knows. He says, not even the angels in heaven know. Only my father in heaven knows the day Amen. and that we'll be returned, you know, that, he'll, that Jesus will come back. So, you know, that's where our fallacy is. But yet we get a date and we know a date in time to when this Advent judgment started, which was, you know, in 1798. So what a beautiful thing to think about that is. And as we begin to study more, we see 1844, you know, the misconception we had as a, as a group, you know, uh, uh, and stuff, not us individually here, but as a church had at that time, uh, the misunderstanding of it. But what a beautiful thing that as we continue to study, we realize it wasn't this, this wasn't the, the, uh, the, the one that needed to be cleansed, which it does need to be cleansed, but it was the one in heaven. It was just like the, the one here on earth where the, where the, the uh, priest only went into it one time a year. And the nice thing about that is realizing that Jesus only had to go into it once because his sacrifice was so much better than anything else here on earth at that time. Mm -hmm. His sacrifice was a sacrifice for all humans, every single one of us. And what a blessing to know that, that his sacrifice was for us and only had to do it once. But then he is also our advocate and our judge in heaven. So what a blessing to know that he is our advocate in heaven also. Amen, amen. And, and, it's, and it's interesting that the book is sealed because Daniel had already gone through a lot of, uh, what is it, kings and times and centuries. And he was in this prophecy about the future. And he himself was overwhelmed with what the information was. But God knew that he could only handle so much. So he said, seal the book. It'll be time for the end, and people will know what it means then. Yeah, let them know that there's a time frame, and let them know that there's, this is not going to happen in my lifetime. Just like Paul said, you know, he told them, this is not going to happen even in my lifetime. You know, it's not, it's not the, uh, the time frame, the, 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 the span of time that needs to be accomplished at that point. And, what a, and that was a nice thing. But, of course, we have the advantage of looking back in the Word of God, and we see that time frame, and we see that date, and we know that date because we can add those together. When you start adding the 1260 days and the five and 538 to it, guess what you come to? You come to 1798. What a blessing to know that though. You know, it's like everybody says, well, if I knew the day I was going to die, then I would, the day before I'd ask, <laughs> yeah, wouldn't that be the life? The life <laughs> really the life point, you know, you do whatever you want on the very last day, but that's not the way it works. Because his whole thing is, is he doesn't care about the, year that you're born he doesn't care about the year you die he cares about the dash that's in between those two things what did you do with your life that i gave you this opportunity to do and if you did nothing except for that very last day that you wanted to accept jesus you may not make it because you have nothing to prove that you're truly because he's the only one that can look into our hearts and see the truth see if we really were if we really were convicted that he is our savior and amen. stuff instead of just that last amen, amen. mary ellen do you have two minutes left <laughs> well, I'll make it brief. One point that I think is very important is the fact that many people still think that Daniel and Revelation both are sealed books and can't be understood. The reality is, is they're not sealed anymore. They were only sealed for a time. And now we can understand them. All we have to do is read them. Amen. 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 So I, I think that, you know, to kind of conclude all our conversation, which, which I think all of you have brought up uh, beautiful insights is, is, you know, to ask ourselves a question and what does this mean for me today? Right. Mm -hmm. So, and I know we, we talked about it at the beginning, the idea of, 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 of work, right. That we have a work to do as Michael stands up in preaching the good news of the gospel, the good news of the kingdom, the soon return, closer return of that kingdom right um but i think it's very important as we move forward to continue to ponder on this right sabbath schools come and go and topics come and go and 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 especially adventists we're so culturally drenched in prophecy that we kind of almost take it for granted and and um just kind of end up ignoring its urgency and not only that but its relevance right that this is not just something 
in the future, but it needs to make a difference today. Any, any, any last thoughts uh, within the last minute that we have together? Any 10 second thoughts? It, it was a very good lesson. I really enjoyed it. Uh, we've learned a lot, plus what we had done in the past with the salvation symbols and signs. Mm -hmm. And it makes sense. I mean, it brings us forward to where we are now and we continue the work. Okay. Amen. All right. Well, it really progression of the prophecies right before it being fulfilled right before our very eyes. We see those those things being as Jesus told us, you know, when you see the, the leaves on the fig tree getting green and stuff and they're very bright and green, then you know summer is near. So we see that, that these things being fulfilled are becoming our this is the beginning of sorrows. It's not the last, it's just the beginning of them. All right. So friends, church family, hold on. We love you. We pray <laughs> you have a wonderful Sabbath. Thank you, all of you. This was a fun time. And again, I wish you all the very, very best Sabbath. We're all together.